Good evening, students. Today we're going to take a look at Unit 7, Lesson G, Graph Transformations. At the end of this video, you should be able to say, I can identify the effects of the following translations, horizontal and vertical. So what we're going to be doing is looking at different functions and take a look at how when we perform different operations, such as addition or subtraction, how that affects the graph. One thing that um, bears taking note of is that these rules that we're going to talk about hold true for all functions. So we're going to look at squares, and we're going to look at um, x to the third, and we're going to look at some absolute value, and all the rules that we take a look at will apply for all the functions. So let's take a look at example one. It says look at the following graphs on your calculator. Now f of x equals x squared is identified here as our parent graph. So that means that that is where we're going to start from. Now I'm going to put these on my calculator. You don't necessarily have to put them on yours right now. If you just kind of want to look and follow along, that would be okay. So if I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to type in y equals, and then the x squared, and then I hit the graph button. So what we have here in blue is a U-shaped graph called a parabola. Anytime I have an x squared, I'm going to have this U-shaped graph, this para, uh, parabolic shape, this parabola graph. So now what we want to do is go back over here and take a look at what's going to happen if I add 3 to the graph or to the function. So I go to my calculator, I go to y equals, I'm going to leave that original in there for comparison's sake, and now I'm going to type in x squared plus 3 and graph that. So again, the blue graph is the parent graph. It's the original one where nothing is, is adjusted. Notice the red graph is our x squared plus 3. It's the same shape. It's still a U shape. It's still a parabola. But what happened was we took the graph and we kind of shifted it or slid it up. And if you look at the tick marks here, 1, 2, 3, we slid it up 3 units, which corresponds to the value that was added on the back end here. All right, we'll fill in these blanks in just a minute, but let's take a look at x squared minus 4. Now, before we graph anything, let's see if we can make a prediction in our head. x squared was our parent graph. That was the blue graph on the screen. When I added 3, it shifted the graph up 3 units. That's the red graph. So in your head, I want you to think about what possibly could happen when I subtract 4 from my graph. And then let's graph it over here and see if your prediction was correct. So we'll leave those other two on there. And I'm going to graph x squared minus 4 graph. And here comes our graph in black. So blue is the parent, the original. When I added 3 to the graph, it shifted it up 3 units. And did you predict that when we subtracted, it was going to shift your graph down? If you did, that was a good prediction. 1, 2, 3, 4 tick marks. It slid the entire graph down 4 units which again corresponds to the value that we subtracted. So because our graph, when we add and subtract on the back end, moves up and down vertically, these are called vertical shifts. And then let's fill in these blanks here. So the first one was addition. If you add a value to the function, the graph is going to shift if you subtract a value from the function, the graph is going to shift down. And again, this works for all functions. So it could be a U-shaped graph, it could be a V-shaped graph, it doesn't matter. If you add something onto the back end, we're going to shift it up. If you subtract something from the back end, we're going to slide it or shift it down. Okay. So it says here in example one, or the practice, to graph f of x equals x squared plus 5, you should shift the graph of f of x equals x squared, dot, dot, dot. So here's our parent graph. Here's where we're starting from. If I add 5 to it, what is that going to do to the graph? Well, based on what we just looked at above, I don't need to even go to my calculator because I know that when I add something to the back end of my graph, it's going to shift it up, and in this case, 5 units. If we look at example 2, we've got x squared minus 7. It says you should shift the graph of f of x equals x squared. So again, the x squared is where we're starting from. If I 
subtract 7 from my graph. Again, I don't need to go to the calculator. I know by the rules that when I subtract something from my graph, it's going to shift it down, in this case, 7 units. So those are our vertical shifts, moving the graph up or down. All right, there's some new tries. You'll do those in class tomorrow. Let's take a look at example two. Now it says, again, look at the following graphs on your calculator. So you can graph them if you want, or you can just kind of follow along as I do it. Our parent graph this time is an absolute value graph. It could be an x squared, it could be an x cubed, because these rules are, are true for all of them, but we're gonna look at this one just to change it up as a um, absolute value graph. So I'm gonna go to y equals again. I wanna clear out these old functions. Oops, clear that out. And now I'm going to put in the absolute value of x. Alpha window will pull up a menu here for me, and choice number one is abs. That's what I want, absolute value of x. And then I can go ahead and graph that. Anytime we have an absolute value graph, it's going to make this nice V shape. So if we take a look at what's going on over here, this time I'm not adding something onto the back end of my graph or to, sorry, the back end of my function. I am adding something specifically to the x value. So I want you to kind of think a minute if, if you can maybe make a prediction of what's going to happen. And we'll go over here, y equals, and I'm going to leave my parent graph on there and enter this new one in, alpha window to get absolute value. And I want x plus 3. And then I can go ahead and graph it. So there's my parent graph. And then coming in the red here, you'll see my new graph. Now, maybe you predicted that because we were adjusting the x that it was going to move side to side like the x-axis. So that would be a good prediction. However, the x's work the opposite of the way maybe you would think. So when we add 3, we actually shift our graph to the left 3 units. Okay, so if we add something onto the back end of the whole function, it moves it up or down. If we just add something to the x value, it's going to move it side to side. In this case, because we are adding 3, it shifts our graph to the left, opposite of maybe what you would think. So if I do x minus 4 here, make a prediction, and then let's take a look at the graph and see if you are correct. So I do absolute value x minus or graph, and it's going to come in here in black. And notice it shifted our graph to the right, one, two, three, four units. So anytime that you add or subtract from the x, you move your graph side to side. So these, if we go back and fill in our blanks over here, these are called horizontal shifts. And then if we go here, if you add a value to the x-coordinate of the function, the graph is going to shift to the left. If you subtract a value subtract, um, to the x-coordinate of the function, the graph is going to shift to the right. So again, the x's kind of work maybe the opposite of what you would think. So let's Move down here. Let's wait, we need to go up here, sorry, to the next page. All right, so it says to graph f of x equals x plus 5 quantity squared, you should shift the graph of f of x equals x squared. So now the examples that we did were absolute values. This, was, this one is an x squared, but it doesn't matter because it's still a function, so the rules are in effect. Notice I'm not adding something onto the back end of the x squared. I'm adding something specifically in parentheses to the x value only. So therefore, when I add something just to the x, it's going to shift our graph. Oh, we don't need to say shift. We'll just say that it's going to shift left five units. Similarly here, again, x squared is our original. I am subtracting not from the whole back end, not from the whole function, but just from the x value. So that means that I'm going to shift to the right seven units. Okay, there's a couple of you tries. You'll do those in class tomorrow. Now, in our last example here, we have multiple translations, meaning when we have our parent graph or our original, so if this is our original graph, 
we can adjust the x and we can adjust the y or the whole function. We're not limited to just adjusting one of them. We could shift our graph up and to the right or down and to the left or down and to the right. We can do a combination, so to speak. So we have to look at what's going on. So if I start here by subtracting 4 from the entire back end of the function, that means that I'm adjusting the y value. So this is going to shift my graph down 4 units. And then, if I look here, I am adding 5 just to the x value, because it's in the absolute value bars with the x, so just to the x. So when I add to the x value, that's going to shift my graph to the left 5 units. And if you wanted to verify that, we could go to y equals, just so you can kind of visually see that, clear these guys out. So x squared was my parent graph or sorry, absolute value of x is my parent graph. That's this right here. And if I want to graph the new, it was the absolute value of x plus 5, and then get out of your absolute value bars, minus 4. Now it's absolute value, so I know it's going to be a v-shape. Let's see where did it go. So there's the parent graph coming in in the blue. Now our new one is going to come in in the red. And let's see if we were accurate. It looks like it went down four units from where it was. It was here and it went down four units and it also went to the left five units. So we were correct. So without even drawing the graph, we can get a visual of where it's going. Blue is the parent graph. And by performing these operations, we move that V shape, that parent graph, down four units and to the left five units. Okay, here's another U try that you'll do in class tomorrow. And then you'll want to make sure that you fill this out as well after watching the video, things that you can do and that you feel confident with, and things that you still don't know how to do, still don't understand. If you're not sure where to find some of the functions on your calculator, how to find where to graph the absolute value, make sure you ask your teacher in class about that, and he or she can help you find those buttons on your calculator. And then, of course, make sure that you are aware of all the different resources where you can go to get help. Rewatch the video, ask a friend, ask a question in class, go to the Math Resource Center, um, search the topic on the internet. Of course, you can always come to T-Bolt time. So there's definitely options where you can get some help. All right, we'll see you tomorrow in class.